Is this actually a Yasuo nerf? Very interesting. But you know what? You can't spell interesting without int. What is up team pro guides and welcome back to another upcoming changes video. Like always, we're here to give you guys some of the updates in regards to what is going down next patch. Now as a quick disclaimer, more so than other patches, these changes are more prone to change. This cycle is a crazy one and Riot has stated that they're pending further testing. But most of these changes will probably happen, but we'll keep you guys up to date in our new Discord server. So if you guys wanna get the most accurate information very fast, then go join our Discord community as well as our subreddit. And just as a quick side note for you guys, for anyone who's feeling upset at what's going on right now, because I know that myself and a lot of my friends are, feel free to express your concerns with us on our Discord. It's a great community, very positive people. We want to include all of you guys into our Pro Guides family and be a place of positivity for everyone when the times ahead look a little bit challenging. And hopefully we can all use League of Legends not as a way to distract ourselves from what's going on, but as a challenge to ourselves to improve and also to find a great community along the way. And as always for our question of the day, which champion recently in one of your games made you want to pull your hair out? So now you might call me crazy, but recently Annie has been making me want to jump into the freeway and get hit by a bus. While her spell range is low, there is no way to dodge her abilities. She can flash stun and deal a ton of damage and then even wipe out entire teams by herself with basically no counterplay when her flash is up. Let me know what your guys' answer is down below. We'd love to see it. All right, guys, to get into it, let's start talking about the cosmetic changes. In other words, my favorite section, the skins. We've got a couple of cool skins joining the shop, including High Noon Aurelia, High Noon Senna, and finally Hextech Nocturne. However, like the rest of the Hextech skin line, you will need to unlock this Nocturne skin through gemstones rather than RP. These High Noon skins are great additions to the already present skin line. Lucian's got his partner in crime, while Aurelia and Yasuo can duel it out Wild West style. All right, next up, we have to cover all the balance changes we've got next patch. All right, so I'm gonna let you guys in on something. Most patches, we try to rush through the system section as it's usually just a single item change or a rune getting tuned slightly, but this patch is very different. There are plenty of champion balance changes, but the biggest changes this patch are definitely systematic ones. So let's talk about the summoner rift changes first. Cloud Rift is going to receive a change. Movement speed in wind areas when out of combat is being increased to 35%. And there's gonna be two new Scryer's Bloom locations on this variation of Summoner's Rift. One will be outside of the base gates, while the other will be near the tri-bush. So why the change to begin with? Well, Cloud Rift was arguably one of the least impactful changes on Summoner's Rift. You got some extra movement speed in certain parts of the jungle, but aside from that, nothing was really that special. Riot is trying to emphasize the importance of these speed zones and also give Cloud Rift an identity of its own, the safest of all the rifts. Scryer's Bloom is a heaven send for teams that can't walk in for vision control in their jungle. These new locations are relatively safe for defending teams to use to clear out their own jungle during times of uncertainty or danger. Another reason this rift is the safest is that the wind areas are adjacent to either river. The river is an area where vision control is highly contested. Dropping a ward in itself doesn't put you in combat, so players are able to quickly place one down and retreat back to their wind areas for a nice out of combat movement speed buff. This map also makes rotations much easier. All players need to be more careful about committing to those side lane dives under inner turrets. If your team doesn't have mid-priority, the enemy team can quickly rotate through either part of their jungle and use the immense movement speed buff to quickly aid their teammate in need. The next rift receiving a change is Infernal Rift. This rift was just way too similar to the Mountain Rift. Aside from the elemental buff that players would duke it out over, both of these rifts just change the layout of the map. To make a clearer distinction between the two, a blast cone has been added near the Gromp camp as well as one outside of the base gates. What this change accomplishes is it allows for much more aggressive plays from teams that are pushing. Blast plants outside of your own base are usually more of a liability than a tool of use. There are times where a defending team can use one, however. For example, if your ally is retreating to a base gate and an enemy is chasing them, you can pop the blast plant as your teammate crosses over it to simultaneously send your ally to safety while blowing your opponent away. 
However, timing is quite essential as an unlucky blast plant spawn time could just as easily cost an ally or even your own life. Range champions hunting you down could possibly attack the blast plant to blow you away from your base gate and closer to them if you're planning on escaping through your base gate as well. Expect more explosive erratic gameplay on Infernal Rift from now on. Summoner Ghost is also receiving a change. I don't like getting ghosted in real life, but in League of Legends, it's a little bit more tolerable. We all know it as the speedy summoner spell that's receiving a ton of buffs. First up, there are some minor buffs that are being put in place to compensate these buffs, but it's absolutely a net positive for the spell. First, the movement speed buff is being decreased from 28 to 45% to 20 to 40%. There is also no longer a ramp up time. The moment you cast a spell, you receive a flat movement speed buff. It's kind of like upgrading an engine. We'll, we'll take those for sure. In addition to this, the cooldown is being increased from 180 to 210. But in return, you can extend the duration of Summoner Ghost by four to seven seconds off of a takedown. These buffs are huge and I expect players to start running it much more often than before. Watch out for Hecarims and Darius players especially. Next, we need to run through a bunch of runes that are receiving changes, the first one being Guardian. Guardian is receiving a ton of quality life buffs. Its focus is being shifted toward the protecting aspect of the rune as well. Its range is being increased from 175 to 350, and it will no longer trigger upon an ally taking 75 to 200 damage within 2.5 seconds based on level, or if the damage would be otherwise lethal. This means that it won't randomly activate off of minuscule damage. The shield is going to be increased from 70 to 150 to 80 to 200, and the movement speed bonus is being removed altogether. These are well needed changes, guys. I'm sure my support player friends out there can all relate. I absolutely hate it when Guardian would proc after the most random things. I take two damage and randomly Guardian acts up like an overprotective parent. Very, very relatable. And then suddenly I'm lacking a keystone. It was a feels bad man every single time and I'm personally glad they made this change. Please let me know in the comments if you also agree with me. Another keystone that's set for some changes is the Predator Keystone. The cooldown is being reduced from 150 to 100 seconds to 170 seconds, while the damage is also being reduced from 60 to 180 plus 0.4 base AD and 0.25 AP to 30 to 90 plus 0.2 base AD and 0.1 AP. However, to compensate for this, you'll be able to use it from the very start of the game. Also, the rune now channels instantly and only consumes the bonus damage charge when hitting an enemy champion. The bonus movement speed has been changed so that it ramps up over 1.5 seconds to 45% when moving towards enemy champions. A final point to take note of is the fact that the hunt duration after activating Predator is being reduced from 15 to 10 seconds. Overall, this rune has lost some damage but gained a ton of usability. As a result, it's going to be a keystone focused on mobility over burst damage. Unflinching is also due for some changes. The rune is severely underused, not because it's bad. I mean, who doesn't like tenacity? Rather, it's just hard to access. These changes, or buffs rather, push unflinching into a much more usable rune than before. Taking the rune grants 10% tenacity and slow reduction now, and this bonus can ramp up to 30% based on missing health, hitting that point when you have 30% health remaining. Champions that utilize the Resolve Tree are going to feel so much stronger now. The third tier of accessory runes, which includes Revitalize, Overgrowth, and Unflinching, always felt like it focused solely on scaling. Unflinching is definitely the early to mid game rune of choice, and the Resolve Tree overall will be much stronger because of these changes. Next up, short and simple, we also need to mention that Taste of Blood will now provide an indicator showing players its cooldown. Finally, Approach Velocity is receiving some changes as well. Initially, the rune was supposed to be used both defensively and offensively, but the defense usage just wasn't practical. Riot has decided that they want to take out the movement speed when moving towards movement-impaired allies, and instead focus exclusively on making Approach Velocity an offensive rune. Starting next patch, you'll gain 7.5% bonus movement speed when moving towards a movement speed-impaired enemy champion. And this amount doubles if you're the one who's applied that crowd control. 
This isn't really a nerf since most champions that ran this rune weren't even trying to save an ally. You don't really think of champions like Olaf or Mundo as your knights in shining armor running to your aid. While you're getting dove by the enemy Zed, you know the last person to come to your aid is going to be one of those champions, as they'll be doing the exact same thing to the enemy marksman. Instead, what this change does is it allows other champions, even those without crowd control, to run it. For example, if one team has a bot lane Ash, any champion on that team can use approach velocity to at least gain the half bonus movement speed when chasing down whoever Ash tags. 7.5% movement speed is still a sizable bonus, and this rune should definitely see some more overall usage rather than remaining a niche rune. All right, guys, that was a ton of system changes, but they were super important to cover since they affect every single champion. Speaking of champions, let's talk about the nerfs and buffs they're going to be seeing this coming patch. First up is the top lane, where we have absolutely nothing. Gosh, I'm really upset about that because I was actually really hoping for some change in the top lane. I guess it's just gonna be the same old boring grind fest. Questionable, but balance is a subjective matter. Okay, so moving on to the jungle, we've got three balance changes coming up for you guys, and the first one is going to be Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks is receiving a minor nerf, a very, very, very minor nerf, but we'll probably say it's a massive change nonetheless. Just kidding. His W's damage to minions is going down from 60% to 50%. Now, this is still higher than where it was before his buffs, so he's still definitely OP. Don't get any bright ideas, guys. Fiddlesticks was OP before his buffs, and then he got buffed again, and now he's getting nerfed. Same old story. He needs more nerfs for sure, but this is a start at least. Fiddlesticks is sustain from minions and his accessory strength of wave clear was proving to be a little too much. Riot has decided that they need to hit Fiddlesticks somewhere and they've decided to take away from his strength rather than directly targeting his damage output. Next to the jungle is a Trundle nerf. His W's movement speed is being changed from 30 to 50% to 20 to 52%. He ends up with 2% more movement speed on the spell, but this is definitely a nerf as Trundle's early game is going to suffer heavily from this nerf. He's lost 10% bonus movement speed on the ability early on. Without it, chasing down opponents and sometimes running away will be a lot more difficult than before. And without that, it's, he just doesn't feel that strong, to be honest. I almost don't think this will take Trungle out of the meta altogether, but it's probably going to drop his win rate by half a percent, maybe even a whole percent. Trungle's biggest asset is the fact that he deals ridiculous amounts of damage. He'll still be an incredibly powerful stat check champion, so don't count him out just yet. Volibear received the hotfix buff this patch, but it's likely that these changes will be reiterated on the next set of patch notes anyway. His Q's movement speed went up from 10 to 30% to 15 to 35%, while his E's bonus damage went up from 60 to 180, plus 7 to 13% of an enemy's maximum health, to 80 to 200, plus 11 to 15% of an enemy's maximum health. The non-champion damage cap was also increased by 50 at all ranks. Volibear has been underperforming like many new releases before him, so these buffs should incentivize more players to pick him up, while also stabilizing his win rate. All right, guys, that covers the jungle, so let's talk about the mid lane next. The majority of balance changes next patch are to mid laners. First up is Akali, who has been due for a buff. Yes, another buff, but to justify this, she's been severely underperforming, especially in Platinum and Higher, where she currently holds a 45% win rate. Akali's Q damage is going up from 25 to 125, plus 65% total AD, and 60% AP, to 30 to 130, plus 65% total AD, and 65% AP. This buff will make Akali a little bit stronger in lane, and also help her clear out waves. The 5 base damage buff, alongside 5% more AP scaling, will definitely help Akali out a ton. All of these numbers are small, this is Akali's bread and butter ability, the one she uses most often. Next up is a pretty unexpected buff to mid lane Brand. And here we thought Riot forgot about him. I actually forgot about him. Who the hell is Brand? Well, this guy named Brand will now gain even more mana when killing in a Blaze unit. The mana restore is going up from 6 to 18 to 10 to 30. This is a nice little buff that'll help Brand players out when they can't secure a blue buff. Whether it's because their jungler got counter jungled or because the jungler needed it, Brand should be a little bit more self-sufficient than before. Ultimately, this is a minor buff to jungle Brand as well, especially if he includes raptors or wolves in his pathing, which he should, by the way. 
Brand has been underperforming significantly as a mid laner, and these buffs are the first steps in finding him some success there. Our analysts don't believe that this buff will make Brand a meta pick though, but it should help enthusiasts who try to make him work, make them a little bit better, I guess. Good luck, Brand mid laners. Another mid lane champion receiving a buff is Victor. His Q's auto attack AP ratio is going up from 55% to 60%, the shield from 15 to 20%, and the empowered shield from 24 to 32%. This buff is definitely nice for Victor. He's going to deal a lot more late game damage and also be a little bit harder to kill as well. This also doesn't help his early game out that much. Victor will remain as a late game AP carry, and this buff will make realizing that late game fantasy even more satisfying than before. Okay, so this is what I've been talking about in the beginning. The nerf we've all been waiting for is here. Guess who's getting it? Yasuo. But is it really a nerf? Well, yes, it definitely is, but it might not be for everyone, unfortunately. Yasuo's base health is being reduced from 523 to 490, but before you make any remarks, make sure to hear this one too. His passive shield health is being increased by 20 at all levels. In other words, it's going to be going up from 110 to 510 to 130 to 530. Finally, his W's cooldown is going up from 26 to 18 to 30 to 18. That wind wall nerf is pretty big, might I say massive, but the health nerf isn't that big of a deal to be quite honest. Since wind wall is the ability Yasuo players max last most of the time, this nerf is actually going to really hurt Yasuo players. However, like we mentioned, these nerfs will not affect everyone. Hyolo players are definitely able to take advantage of these nerfs. They're better at playing around cooldowns and also around Yasuo's passive. While Yasuo's passive shield is stronger than before, there's counterplay to it. Range champions can activate the shield, then immediately back off, then proceed to zone Yasuo. The fact that Yasuo's wind wall cooldown has gone up means that it'll be much easier to play against Yasuo now. Most Yasuo players, at least the ones who know what they're doing, alternate between using their passive and their wind wall to secure farm. They'll take some damage with the shield, back off, then when they want to farm again, they use their wind wall. They back off, and then their shield comes back up. It's a cycle, but this wind wall nerf disrupts it significantly. This nerf though was well needed. I've been saying for a while that his wind wall is broken. Players have been crying about Yasuo for several patches now, but those zeal buffs this patch were the last straw. Another mid lane champion receiving a nerf is Cassiopeia, or if you're like my friend Nathan Ng, Cassiopeia. Let me know down below if you say Cass like Nathan, or if you say Cass like me. Her base HP is being decreased from 575 to 560, her base armor is going down from 20 to 18, and her magic resistance is going up from 30 to 34. Cassiopeia feels a little too tanky, and these changes should open up some more counterplay to her. Since her MR was actually increased, this should incentivize players to pick AD champions to counter her. 18 base armor is extremely low, and a single serrated Dirk purchase can put Cassiopeia players in a sticky situation. Paired with a small base health nerf, Cassiopeia should have a more abusable early game next patch. Finally, with no support changes planned, let's run through the bot lane. Okay, Varus is getting nerfed. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Riot. Thank you for listening to us, because who else kept saying Varus was too strong? No other channel had been saying it, maybe one or two YouTube videos here and there, but we have been saying it since day one. Sorry I got a little emotional, but the days of bot lane oppression have been pretty rough. Varus has been ridiculously over -tuned. And finally, Riot has decided to step in and take away some power. His AD per level is going down from 3.11 to 3, and his Q's AD ratio is going down from 1.1 to 1.65 at max charge, to 1 to 1.5 at max charge. Those fully charged Qs are going to still hurt, but at least they're gonna hurt a lot less. Varus's AD per level is also going down, so this is a double whammy nerf. While this won't completely take Varus out of the meta, players should have a much easier time playing against him starting next patch. Next are buffs. Senna is going to receive buffs exclusively as a bot laner, not as a support. While at the end of the day, it's not completely possible and she'll still be a stronger support, they were really targeting bot lane Senna. Senna's soul drop rate upon killing a unit is going up from two to eight and a third 8.33%. Also her attack speed ratio is going up from 0.2 to 0.35. This attack speed buff especially is pretty massive. The one major weakness Senna has is that her attack speed is abysmally bad. This forces her to avoid attack speed items, which are usually a staple purchase for marksmen. Her attack speed ratio is nearly doubling, 
and this should open up some new potential builds for her as well. Finally, Zaya is receiving a major buff to her ultimate. The base damage is going up from 100 to 200 to 125 to 375. 200 base damage on a level 3 ult is pretty underwhelming. This buff should make her ultimate feel much more like an ultimate. With such low base damage, its only purpose was to help Zaya players reposition or to set up her E pullback. This buff is definitely a nice one. Even at level 6, the extra 25 damage should help swing fights in her favor. Those times where an enemy escapes with just a sliver of health should be less common for Zaya players. They use their ultimates aggressively. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up our video for the upcoming changes in patch 10.12. As I said in the introduction, for all of you guys who are just looking for a community, some place to reach out and find someone to talk to about something you care about, like League of Legends, please join us on Discord. We have a very positive, awesome community that's just looking to help each other out. And as always, if you guys want to get better at League of Legends, you know where to go. Go to ProGuides.com or download our new iOS app where you can find a challenger coach anytime to help you out and get you to the division where you belong. That's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and I'll see you on the Rift.